Hey there, everyone. This is Wild Cow playing in the Senate run of Super Mario World. Well, I say playing, but we're pretty much ending. As you can see, we already got the max amount here on the little menu thing. An interesting, hilarious note is that, um... Japanese version doesn't have the little star after the 96. It just kind of ends there, and you kind of have to assume that 96 is the natural number to end. Also, I think the PAL version, like, instead of having a star, it keeps the same font, but it changes to blue for some reason. I don't know why they do that, but yeah, when you win the special world, everything turns badly colored on the map. It's pretty great. This is what they call a reward. So, today we're doing Bowser Castle. Gonna end with the end of the game. It's pretty surprising. Gonna go ahead, because I'm gonna do all the rooms, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a little natural uh, checkpoint here, because some doors are not going to be very hard, but some doors I've kind of completely forgot what was inside them, such as door number one, which is not a door I'm typically, like, yeah, attracted to do, so I kind of have to relearn it here. I've always done 2-8, <laughs> flat out. That's always the order I've always done, so some of these... It's, it's like I'm learning, and, you know, auto-scrolling with the Smasher, you you do kind of have to learn it, but from what, from what I've seen, you're gonna be always safe at the edge, so uh, I think I'm so the pool, guys. Just kind of have to hurry. This, though, looks really, really tricky if you don't have any of the switches, but yeah, that, that's about it. That's the thing. That one turn into a five, except backwards. Door number two is not gonna be very hard. So remember, guys, the... Um, because all I gotta do is dodge like three potabos. Okay, four, five potabos. Man, that makes quite a difference. Man, so as you can imagine, uh, this is what they were asked to imitate in the Bowser Castle contest. The only instance of the carpets. I have no recollection of what the pathway of the Moors can be is. Wow, that's some quite a judicious use of the English language there, okay. Alright, so where am I have to go being? I'm kind of afraid to jump on, on robot ducks, so I am taking my time and kind of politely asking for the ducks to fall off naturally, because I'm... The ceiling in this little area place type is rather low, you know? It's it's a low ceiling. It's a ceiling that has a lot of lowness to it. It's low G ceiling. Okay, you can jump over one. It has been discovered that I can safely jump over a single dog. You know, I, 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 until I had no choice, I played it safe. It's natural survival instinct speaking here, but once I had no choice, I took a chance, and uh, a little bit of truth has been found. Except it's still super easy to screw it up, so uh, you probably don't want to screw it up, because like I don't want to say anything out of hand here, but screwing up is probably a bad idea, I know, it's like, who would have thought? So basically what I'm learning here is that I might still want to take my time and not take on necessary chances, unless I want to, which I suppose goes without saying. I have no... Oh, there we go, and then you go down here, I forgot it's out of hole, and there's a guy there, he's all alone. He's all alone, he's all alone. Door number four is the one I remember the least out of all the doors. I honestly have no recollection. Oh yeah, it's this one. I now remember what's in door number four. That's... wow, that, that one jump there here. This is some tricksy timing mechanophone, you know? Well, basically, just gotta wait for the thing, but still, not a lot of coins and not a lot of killing enemies, but um, I, I, I say that, but I just had trouble because of robot ducks, so I really should be paying more attention to what is going on. That was the first half. It was very difficult to see it was the first half, and afterwards there's the second half. Don't remember five as a kid. I thought it was super impossible because I never thought to just let this freaking thing fall before you start run. And then I thought of running right into the wall because that's the manly thing to do. Okay, that was obviously a demo. Obviously.
Well, it is kind of like, well, not tricky timing, but you, you gotta be timed well, and then you go like, Oh man, I sure am running. Running forward is the most difficult video game to do. So that was door number five. I think it's the first time ever I ever beat it. Because I always just figured it wasn't possible. Like this door, too, as a kid, I always figured it was just too hard to really be worth it. Because I mean, you're swimming, there's kind of layer shenanigans, and... There's a skeleton, he's throwing bones. Bones are pretty scary, even as a kid. I've always thought bones were the scariest thing ever. And then look at that! This is like straight out of a ROM hack sort of scenario. Of course, in a ROM hack sort of scenario, we'd get this in like World 2 or 3, but still. <laughs> details. <laughs> so, uh, that skeleton over there, he's shuffling. As you can see, he doesn't actually move his legs while he's walking, he's just moving his feet, but it's like his feet aren't attached to legs, they're just kind of directly attached to a shell. I don't know if that's really an advantage, you know, but I mean, evolution kind of worked that way for him, so it's probably has some form of advantage because, I mean, it's the skeleton model with that particular uh, mutation that uh, survived and proliferated, so... Uh, I mean, evolution, nature probably knows something that we don't, and that's a pipe instead of a door. Is there a reason for that? No idea, but you still plop out dry as a whistle. That's pretty great! Door number seven is also known as the seventh door. It's very scary, because as you can see, there's statues. And there's statues, and there's a boot block! And there's a statue, a blue block, not a boo block, those two are completely different. So, is there any other hopping statue in this video game? I don't think we've seen any other hopping statue in this video game. Well, it sure was hard. And now the last one, the one I like to call home. No, I don't. That That's a lie. I've never called this door home, ever. But it's the door with the charging chuck, also known as... Whoa, uh, Bunny Rabbit Man. <laughs> I just jumped right into it. There was a demo show that, you know, if you call uh, charging, but without the G, so it's charging Chuck, without his whistle, he's gonna get angry and he's gonna stomp all over your face, but in the air. It's pretty weird how it works out. They're all the hopping kind. It's kind of funny. I wonder why. Let's have all the hopping Charlies. Let's be like, like, they didn't even vary the kinds or whatever. Here there's the light, except it's like super not really that useful. I forget, maybe it's more useful on, on a real actual TV. Whoops! I seem to have slipped and fell. Wow, I sure am quite clumsy. Luckily, however, video game McNintendo here gave us a back door that leads us here directly. It's, it's pretty fanciful. It's like a shortcut, except... That's exactly what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the light because otherwise, well, yeah, I don't want to jump on you. Uh, my my instincts like man, there's a ninja. Probably want to jump on him. There may or may not be difficult jump somewhere in there. Well, there's the fact, and I can't stomp on a ninja even though they're very stompable enemies. There's that one. Oh, well. Well, I mean, this looks tricky, but actually, if you know how ninjas behave and know that the next jump is going to be the highest, yeah, you can kind of plan for it, and it's really not that bad, and you get a midpoint here, but you don't get a midpoint in a real level, I don't know why. Probably going to have... Uh, uh, uh. Uh, am I turning my thing on or off here? I have no idea, because, you see, we don't have a HUD, so I can't see if my, the, you no, know, the aesthetic hack here is on or off, because we're gonna have to jump a little robot ducks in order to use them as projectiles! Okay. Hey! Well, either they don't give points, or I have no idea what is food. Both are probably just as valid and true, however. So don't worry your little cutie head. Well, I probably want to avoid, though, the mushroom, just for the sake of having to avoid a mushroom. I love avoiding mushrooms. I spent all my ginger years avoiding mushrooms all day long. Hey there, help man. How's it going? So that's Bowser, and he's riding a decapitated clown head. Is there a reason ever for that? No! He just loves scooping out the brains out of clowns, and then, you know, he's a big fan of taxidermy. Like, even giant evil dragon statues with very spiky shells 
need some form of hobby. And, you know, bowling inside uh, the cranium of a clown that is still smiling and blinking is totally, totally valid. Like, there ain't no hobbies that aren't valid. Some of them may be, however, socially unacceptable. Doesn't technically doesn't make them valid. It does, however, make you engage in illegal behavior, which, you know, is, is another issue entirely, but not the one at hand right now. There are bricks, you can, like, go behind them on the ramparts, pretty great. Can't believe I missed one of the robots. I was too... I don't know, I guess I was trying to be too fancy, too careless. And, oh, the robot clown can cry. What a sad little figment. What a sad little notion. What a happy flaming guy. He is happy. Look at his smile. It's the happiest death fire in the world. Now the clown is angry and his big, big old orange eyes and they're all filled up and even got a little vein pulsing on his temple. That's pretty weird. So the trick here is just kind of loaf around. When he's doing that, just get behind him so you're sure he's not going to go down your head. Also watch out because he destroys his own ducks because he's Bowser, man. He don't give no gruff. He doesn't. It's, it's written on his business card, like, King of the Koopa, don't give no gruff. I can't believe I got hit, though. That's kind of... It's kind of a terrible thing, you know? I probably should try to avoid getting hit by a Bowser that is spinning using Mode 7 graphics. Because that's the seventh mode uh, of, of sprites being able to be modified on the fly. It's pretty great. There's a lot of technology that goes into making a Super Nintendo and a Super Nintendo game. There is no space after the comma after Prince is there, and that is grammatically incorrect. This is the only instance of the fireworks sprite. Don't know how to use it because Mario isn't disappearing. Well, as far as I know, every time you use a fireworks sprite, Mario disappears. There might be some ASM hacking going on here in the game that I never really thought about. You know, it's, it's really subtle. Now we got the credits. Did you ever see the credits? Because now it's the credits. It's the credits! There's Mario! When he can walk forward with the Yoshi on behind the princesses sitting on his back. It's not because he's gallant or anything. It's so they don't have to animate her walk. Even though they did give her a walking animation in uh, the ending there after you just saved her. So I guess it is just to be gallant. Well then, Mario, you're trying to be so fancy with your big old belly and porn stash. Good job. We got a whole lot of credits here. Uh, recall they're in the Japanese version. They are in English. But there's a word that keeps coming up, maybe programming, I don't know, but that, it has a spelling mistake and it's consistent. That's pretty funny. It's probably be funnier if I remembered what it was exactly. I think it's like programmer with just one M or something like that. I'm, I may be mistaken, but I, you know, I may. It's a possibility. Here we see in display a whole bunch of the backgrounds we've had in the past. It's pretty great. Koji Gondo, it's pretty neat. It's too bad he's not that known as far as video games composers. Dave Brooks. Dave Brooks. Dave Brooks. That's a weird way to spell Dave. <laughs> Shigeru Miyamoto is actually the pen name for um, Jackie Chan. It's not a whole lot of people know that. Most people should. Now we're back in the house. Look, they put some banners up there and we can see the corner of the trees is still... That's some, some very nice sprite work there, buddies. Congratulations. Truly you deserve much applause. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> There's the enemy on Parade Place. It's pretty good, except now because I've cleared the special world, some enemies will be all different like. It's gonna be like, whoa, they even changed their names there. That's kind of crazy. See, instead of Jumpin' Pumpkin Plant. Oh, hilarious. Instead of Piranha with Piranha misspelled. Uh, 
good times. It's got Pidget Bill, Pidget Bill, Pidget being the bird on the the, the flying carpet in Mario 2 or Mario USA if you want to be all Mario 2 isn't really Mario 2 and a Rex he doesn't change his name even when he's flattened and you caved in the skull that's pretty nice of them and there's Mass Koopa it's pretty great they don't have the green one there like the green one has a red hat there for some reason way to go Nintendo <laughs> There is Lark, he's eating the raft, you rapscallion. So yeah, this has been an aesthetic run of Super Mario World. Not all the runs have been perfect, but I have did my best. And I corrected myself when I missed something for most of the time, maybe. I'm glad that I've done it, and uh, I'm glad a lot of people of you guys out there liked it. I've loved the participation aspect. Where a whole bunch of people like jump to the occasion of showing that Dry Bones here has the wrong palette because his boots are blue instead of red. Uh, so is the Bony Beetle, by the way. I'm glad I've done it, and uh, I'm glad some of you liked it. Uh, what's coming up next? Well, after a lot of pressure, I'm going to be doing a Japanese ROM hack of Super Mario World BC. No, there's no VC. But it is a ROM hack, and it is Japanese, which is more or less what kind of like is my main, uh, I don't know, my main niche, you could say. A couple already translated the first world for me, so next time we'll be all ready to go. All of these fellers are named after fellers that have a different name. That's okay. Look at that, Luigi. Just look at him. Look, look at that guy. I can't believe that guy. Just look at him. That's really? Really, Luigi? You're, you're actually gonna, like, stand here after all you've done? Like, e even, like, with that little coy little smile there, like, don't, don't, dude, don't, tr don't try to act like nothing ever happened, man. Ugh. <sighs>